Hey everyone, I am Susan Jones and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. This week I kind of want to switch it up a little bit and talk about technology. Now, your students are at home. If you have kids at your house, then you know they might be asking for a lot of technology. Now, in the past six to eight weeks that we have been home and we have been in quarantine, my kids have been definitely doing more screen time than usual. Now, I'm trying not to feel guilty about it because usually our rule was about 45 minutes of screen time on the days where the boys were not at school. And so they used to go to school three days a week. So there were three full days where there was no technology time whatsoever. And I felt okay about it because the apps I always had on the iPad were very educational. So I was okay with it. As they're now home seven days a week, that means there's seven days in a row where they are on their iPad. So I really wanted to make sure that while they're on their iPad, I am finding educational games where I can also leave them alone to play. There are some activities and some websites that I love, but anything honestly that has ads on it, I do not let my kids use by themselves. I don't let them use it independently. So if there's ever anything on YouTube or YouTube for kids that they watch, they watch it with me or with Parker because there's not, it's not very regulated and I don't know what ads they might be seeing. I don't know what videos might be on autoplay. So today I wanted to share with you four apps that are great for ages really four through about seven or four through eight that are educational, engaging, and a lot of fun. So let's dive in. The first app I wanna share about is PBS for Kids. It is a free app and it is filled with tons of educational content in there. And even the shows that they have are all educational in some way. They have shows like Nature Cat and Wild Kratts where you learn about different animals and wildlife. On the younger end, they have shows like Daniel Tiger, which really teaches a lot of great uh, social emotional skills to kids. And basically what this app does is not only does it have little clips and little TV shows, but if you go to the PBS games portion, they basically take those popular characters and turn them into educational games that are really engaging for kids. Calvin, my four-year-old, absolutely loves this app and there are so many new games that keep him entertained for, you know, 30 minutes in a row, which is a long time for a four-year-old. If your students or kids at home are a little bit older and you think PBS might be on the young end, you could also try out Nick Jr. or Noggin. I like Noggin a little bit better. It's a little more educational, but again, I think the shows might run a little younger. So Nick Jr. does the same thing as PBS Kids and Noggin. They essentially take popular TV characters, but they put them into educational games that your kids can play. I also love these apps because there are no ads on any of them, which is great. All right, the next app I wanna share is one that I just found out about about two weeks ago, and I'm obsessed. It might be one of I think it is the favorite app I've ever gotten for either of my boys. They both love it. So engaging, so educational, so much fun. It is called Think Rolls. And basically Think Rolls, there's all these different types and this is a paid app. So I will say, I don't believe they offer a free version, but they have different ones that you can do. There's Think Rolls Original, Think Rolls 2, Think Rolls Space, and then Think Rolls um, Kings and Queens and they each have a varying price point. I think some of them are like $2 and some the Kings and Queens had over 200 puzzles and that was $6. But that is the first one that we purchased for them. Again, a lot of these games, while I don't love that you have to spend money on it, the free versions tend to have ads and I just hate that for my kids. I hate them watching commercials and, you know, finishing up a game and clicking off to these weird things. I just don't like any of it. So let me tell you about Think Rolls. Essentially with this game, there's a little ball and you have to figure out how to get the ball from the beginning of the puzzle to get the key and then get out of the puzzle. So you have to do it in some sort of sequential order because there are obstacles in the way. And the one that we started with, Kings and Queens, like I said, there's over 200 puzzles and you walk through six different castles. And each castle kind of has its own aesthetic and it's basically like a logic puzzle. And some of them, there's, you know, there's gears that go certain ways and they make things go up and down. In some levels, students actually have to even like reflect light off mirrors to try to make ghosts go away. And I love it because there are no words whatsoever. So there's no kind of guiding kids on what to do. They have to just experiment themselves and see how to get their think role, their little guy or girl, out of each level. 
As they go ahead and complete these different levels, they get access to different colors that they can make their ball different colors. They can put beards, hats, bows, whatever they want on their little ball. And I'm telling you, both my boys, I think it says it's for six and up. I think the Kings and Queens versions is a little more difficult. So I think that one was six and up. Theo is five and a half, obsessed. Raced through it, loved it. There's easy and hard versions for each. Uh, each of the puzzles. So usually you go through the whole thing on easy version first, and then you can go back and try it a little bit harder. But Calvin, my four-year-old, also loved this. The Think Rolls 1 and Think Rolls 2 were a little easier for him than the space version in Kings or Queens, but so much fun. The next app I want to share is basically an intro to coding, and it is called Code Carts. And this game is one that my kids have played for a little bit of time, and it's just a fun way to get, like I said, get students introduced to coding in an engaging way. Basically what they have to do is race their car and they have to go ahead and move the pieces so that they can get their car from the start to the finish line. It's a very simple concept, but it is a great one for kids to practice observation, a little bit of logic, and a lot of persistence. For ages and price range, Code Cards is a free app to download. I think you can get 10 of the different races free to try it out first. And then I believe it's $3.99. Check the app store, I'm not 100% sure. I'll go ahead and insert it here so I remember. But I think it's $3.99 after that. But I would definitely try the first 10 puzzles to see if your students or your kids are interested in it. And it says it's great for ages four through eight, which I agree with. Like I said, my boys are four and five and a half, and both of them really enjoy trying to race their car to get to the finish line. And the last app I wanna share with you is called Toto Math. This is one that I actually used to use in the classroom a little bit, and my own boys absolutely love it. It is for ages, it starts at preschool where they are doing basic number identification, basic number tracing, and one-to-one -one correspondence. And then it goes all the way up to second grade where they're practicing things like arrays and multi-digit addition and subtraction. Really, this app is such a fun way to practice math. There are many different things they can do. You can hop on the app and there's like 10 to 15 minutes of practice each day where your kid is at. There are also these missions where if they complete the kind of logic mission puzzle, then they go ahead and earn a monster. There's all sorts of different games that your students and kids can play on there. And like I said, it's engaging and it's also motivational because I know my own son Theo, he really tries to co collect as many monsters as he can on there. And he loves getting a star every time he does something right on the app. Toto Math is definitely visually appealing and it's a lot of fun. The kids basically feel like they're playing like a video game. So I don't know about your kids, but my boys thoroughly enjoy that and it keeps them entertained for sure. Now I will say Toto Math is expensive. I think it's geared towards schools. That I think that's why it's that expensive. It is $50 for a year and there's no month to month option. They do offer a uh, a free three-day trial that I suggest if you think your kid will like it, then it might be worth it to try those three days. You don't have to enter a credit card or anything. It's just really three full free days. And then if your child seems to really like it, then you might consider it. But I wanted to let you know about it because it's a great, great educational app. I really wanted to share all four of these apps because Again, with this weird distance learning time, I know that kids are on the iPad and on screens probably more than they have been in the past. And while I don't love that, I don't hate it. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. We're in a crazy time right now. I know that as parents and as teachers, we will be able to give our kids those different opportunities, those hands on. I know that you're getting your kids outside. I know you are getting them everything that they need and you're doing a great job. So I thought it would be great that if your kids are on the iPad more than they are used to being, that at least you can have them doing some educational and fun, engaging games and activities where they can at least review skills they've already learned, or maybe even pick up a few new ones and kind of help bridge that gap that they are losing from not being in the classroom for an extended period of time. So those are the four apps I wanted to share with you because my two boys love them. Some of them my own students have played in the past. And like I said, they are fun. And if they have to be on the iPad, let's have them doing something a little educational if we can, right? So if you're a teacher, feel free to pass these to your students' parents and see if they like them. And if you like this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new week's video. See you later. Bye.
Why is Bob Moran trying to FaceTime me? So, oh, you have all made up, so you must be doing work today. I'm, I'm doing I, my video. I can see your eye, uh, uh, what's this, eyebrows, not eyebrows, but... Eyeshadow. All right, see you later. Bye. Bye, how do I hang up? Oh, well, she has to hang up, then I can hang up. Nope, you can hang up, show me how. Is it a white button? Tap it. Oh, tap it and, and... very good. Otherwise, I'd be happy.